diggity dog. Oh, we got ears, it's time for cheers. Here we go, guys. We're gonna open up Fan Expo Dallas. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Today we're excited because we are at Fan Expo. Yeah, Fan Expo is at a Comic Con. It's here in Dallas. We're at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center. And uh, really excited to kind of take you around the show floor. There's going to be some exciting panels. Hopefully we get to see Brendan Fraser. It's been a while since we've been here. I think 2019 was the last time we came. Yeah, just really looking forward to walking around the showroom floor. And like Chris said, I got to see, uh, it's George of the Jungle. <laughs> and we seeing all the really cool cosplay. Everyone's dressed up here. Everyone's in costume. Uh, there's some really, really cool ones that we've already seen. Come along with us and let's see what this convention has to offer. All right, we just tapped in. Just scanned in. And we are trying to figure out where to go. All right. This is oh, small. cool. Oh, droid. Whoa. <laughs> All right, y'all, we made it inside the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center here in Dallas for Fan Expo. We've got our map. There's also a, a mobile app that you can download that has all this information on here. But if you're not familiar with Fan Expo, essentially it is a convention, like a Comic-Con, but it encompasses more than just comics. They've got wrestlers, they've got athletes, they've got uh, movie stars. Uh, so it's more than just superheroes here. Uh, so we are a bit early. We're gonna get in line and hopefully see some really cool stuff. All right, so we're here at Fan Expo. We didn't dress up, but I think we're wearing appropriate shirts. I have my Jurassic Park Roosevelt's on. And I've got my Batman Roosevelt. That's right. This vlog is not sponsored by Roosevelt's, but... No. But it could be. It should be. Yeah. Maybe one day. Just a reminder, people, cosplay is not consent. And there are a lot of cool costumes here. Be respectful. All right, walking into Fan Expo. All right, cool. So I already made my first purchase of the con. I got two enamel pins. Um, you know, my favorite part of these things is just walking around, visiting all the booths. There are like so many vendors here that have a lot of like really cool uh, like custom art and handmade things. You can find anything that you want from like t-shirts to toys comic books, uh, art pieces. So like that's half the fun is just walking around the show floor and, and uh, finding cool stuff. But yeah, I got these two two pins. I got Appa and then uh, Harry Potter, Mud Blood Pride. Uh, so yeah, my wallet is uh, gonna get a workout today. <laughs> All right, I couldn't let Chris be the only one to buy something. So of course, my first purchase had to be a hat. So I went with R2-D2. People, people. That's right. So I'll take off our random recess hat. What do we think? Nice. What do we now think? you gotta go find R2. He's right. roaming around here somewhere. All right, let's go find him. All right. All right, Chris and I have decided to do mystery boxes. Yeah. Uh, there's really no room to open them here, so when we get home, we'll unbox them and show you what's inside. So if you buy two, you get a mystery shirt free. So uh, yeah, once we get home, we'll unbox and let you know what we got. Yeah, they have so many different kinds, like Star Wars, they have Nickelodeon, they have Mario Brothers, Friends, The Office, uh, Avengers. So yeah, Which one are you getting? I think I want the Nickelodeon one. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna go with uh, Mandalorian, so stay tuned. We'll see what's inside.
So One Eye is a live streaming uh, live auctioning platform. So okay. think about like collectibles, like they're streaming live right over there, right? And they're oh, selling sweet. things like comics, um, and stuff like that. Two tries each, guys, if that's okay. Thank you so much. All right, What Not is here. They've got a giant booth. And if you just scan, you can uh, get a chance to win. Uh, so I've got two chances. Let's go. You said the can't, each of these have like tokens in it. Oh, I almost got goof. Okay. Will I get, oh. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, okay. goofy. Give me a letter. C. Give me a number. Five. C. Five. Hey. All right. What'd you get? What'd you get? I don't know. How do you open? Okay. Nothing. That's okay. Better luck next time. You got a can. I got a can. Better luck next time. Yeah. Hey. All right. So I bet got goofy. Of course. Yeah. So another part of Fan Expo here is the celebrity autographs and uh, meet and greets. And there's a whole section of the show floor that's sectioned off just for that. Uh, I think right now Giancarlo Esposito is doing his. Um, but they have like so many celebrities that are going to be showing up here. Sean Astin, Elijah Wood, Brendan Fraser, Ashley Eckstein. So a bunch of uh, voice actors from like Star Wars, um, some actors from like The Mandalorian. Katie Sackhoff is going to be here. Um, and there's Goofy. <laughs> yeah, the voice of Mickey Mouse is gonna be here too. Um, and yeah, there's just like a lot of wrestlers also, which is kind of cool if you're into WWE. So um, yeah, that'll be interesting. I wonder what questions they're gonna get asked because of all the controversy with Vince McMahon right now. But anyway, yeah, the the, uh, the show floor is very busy and alive with a lot of uh, activity right now. There's a lot of free stuff here too. Yeah, if you're ADD, this is the place to be because there's like a thousand things going on right now. All right, we're on our way to get in line. We hope to see Brendan Fraser. Uh, I yeah, he has a uh, panel. He's doing a panel um, at 11 o'clock, so we're going to go get in line for that. And uh, also the cast of Dexter is here, but I don't think they're going to go on till tomorrow, which is a bummer, but uh, you know, that's life. And tomorrow's Father's Day, so we opted just to come to one day. Uh, it is a three-day convention, so if you want to come out, uh, they travel all around the country, so you can find Fan Expo conventions in your neck of the woods. Just go to their website. Yep. I didn't mean to stop. in here. Uh, when I was in college, I used the old adage of opening my papers with a quote, because that was the easiest thing to do. I would like to open this panel uh, with a quote attributed to one of our generation's greatest thespians. The quote is, all you have to do is just believe in what's there, then the audience will too. That, of course, was none other than Mr. Brennan Fraser, who said that. And the reason I use that quote is we believed, and we are the audience, and we are here, and he is here. So please give a Texas-sized welcome, Fan Expo, Mr. Brennan Fraser. It just, what? We don't have 
have enough time to go through this whole entire thing. But uh, it feels so good to have uh, lived through a time and also to now be alive in what I will call the Renaissance. I mean, truly, like, you're such a hero, man. You're such a hero to, to, to all of us. And, and there's never been a leading man quite like yourself. So thank you for being here with us. It really, it truly, it really means a lot to us. And uh, thank you. Well, it, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. It takes everyone, like your good selves, to bring me to this place. And I'm so grateful. Thank you for it. say out loud in this It's true. And then, literally, in, I mean, 99 was a heck of a year for you. In the same year, we had The Mummy, which is... It's, you're such a unique kind of leading man in that movie. It's such a unique film. It's such a throwback, but it's so of the, you know, 99 uh, era. Uh, just, I mean, that, that film is just so special for what it we is. We didn't know what kind of movie we were making, to tell yeah. you the truth. Like, okay, it's an epic, it's like, it's an action, straight ahead, action picture with, you know, stunts and everything. Well, you love to go and see popcorn movies. Yeah, it's a like roller coaster. Part is, part but is it, a, yeah. is it, yes, it's a comedy. Is, I mean, is this Laurel and Hardy meet the mummy sometimes, you know? Yeah. Is, 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 it, is it a horror movie? I don't know, I got a little spooked a few times there. I mean, it scared me, it was really creepy, but, you know, um, was it, it was a romance, it was a broad epic, it was set in the Moroccan desert, or... Lawrence of Arabia was shot. So there's a, a lot there, which could have turned out to be like a like a smorgasbord, one of those buffet lines where you put a little bit too much everything, <laughs> makes your tummy go off, you know. So well, one way or another, I guess people liked it. So. Yeah, we'll get to you. All right, so we'll start over here, since you've been standing up a long time. Hello, what is your name? Uh, how's it going, Brendan? I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. Um, I want to say before I ask my question, um, I know things have been like up and down for you lately, and like, but you're building yourself back up with things like Ar Aronofsky, Scorsese, and so on. I want you to keep one thing in mind. Every person who is here, I don't know what the capacity of this room is, but they are here because they love, respect, and appreciate everything that you have done in the to bring them up on the next generation just like you inspired their parents. So when you leave this convention today, never forget the impact you've made on every single person here and at every other convention you have been to so far. If you're too kind. Is there a little how kind I should be? Okay, my question is, um, I'm an artist, I'm a creative, I'm a screenwriter, um, but I deal with a lot of anxiety and depression and obsessive tendencies to personal demons. What do you recommend for someone who deals with some of the same stuff that I do, with like anxiety and like in creative or just in life in general? Have courage. <laughs> have courage, because you can't have courage unless you have those challenges. You can't have one without the other. A hero's not a hero unless he's scared of something, unless he's got a problem somewhere. He has to rise to the occasion. And the only way to do that is to have courage. And that's what I was told when I was a young man, a young actor, and I asked similar questions. So hang in there, because it's possible. I'm living proof. Thank you, Brandon. So we just got out from seeing Brendan Fraser. Um, childhood, that was my childhood, yeah. all of his movies. Uh, that dude is like 
the nicest guy ever, right? Like, yeah, real genuine, you know, just really seems to care about his fans. And I'm so happy that he's getting his due. Yeah, what a know? national treasure. He needs to be protected at all costs. He's a saint. Yeah. All right, now we're headed to go see uh, the voice of Mickey Mouse. That's right. So uh, hopefully we can get some good footage and uh, maybe capture a few magical moments. <laughs> All right, Chris and I are usually pretty good about finding our way around. But one thing I will say is that there are not enough signs. <laughs> this uh, is a big convention this center. This is a huge convention center, and the map is kind of confusing. So do better, Fan Expo. We love you, but uh, come on now. Well, hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? So let's just jump right in. Tell us a little bit about how you became the voice of Mickey Mouse. Oh, yeah. well, um, gosh, how did that happen? So um, I guess it kind of starts back in the very beginning. I've been a Disney fan my entire life. Uh, I grew up dreaming of working for the Disney studios. Um, I wanted to be a Disney animator, so I grew up watching all the classic uh, 2D animated shorts, the Mickey Donald and Goofy um, variety, and you know, all the way through Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast and the Renaissance of Animation. Um, so that was my dream, and as such, I went to art school and studied illustration. Um, ended up getting my first job out of college was at Hallmark Reading Cards in Kansas City, Missouri, um, which had a fun Disney connection in itself because Walt Disney got his start in animation in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, started his first uh, studio there, the Laughing Ram Studio. Um, and uh, yeah, it, one day I got an email from a friend of mine who I went to school with who happened to be working at Pixar as an animator. And the email she sent me was an audition outline, auditions for Mickey Mouse. So this was in 2009. Um, at that point, Wayne Allwine had been voicing Mickey for 32 years. Disneyland was one of my favorite shows of all time. So I, I uh, yeah, we got a fantastic fan. Um, and so I talk along with it, you know. Oh no! Look out! Some imagination, huh? Oh, wow. And uh, that's kind of how I, I, you know, practice my Mickey. And, and then, you know, when I go to Disneyland or Disney World with friends, you know, and walk in and say, Oh boy! Um, <laughs> make everyone giggle, kind of like you just did. And that Kingdom Hearts is definitely a little grittier Mickey. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's on a mission. Fun to kind of go on that tangent of Kingdom Hearts from the more normal stuff that we're doing, where Mickey's kind of always up here! And then he's like, did someone say the door to darkness? <laughs> hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog, oh we got ears, it's time for cheers. Hot dog, leaf frog, and holy cow! Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good job! Alright, so we just saw Brett, Brett Iwan, 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 uh, who is the voice of Mickey Mouse. He's the fourth voice of Mickey Mouse, um, and he's been voicing the part since 2009. So when you go to the parks and you ride Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Hollywood Studios, or you watch like Mickey's Clubhouse, um, the cartoons, like that's the voice. So that was that was really cool. It was cool to see like him do the voice. Uh, he also voices Mickey in Kingdom Hearts uh, and kind of to get his insight into the character and like a little more history about like how he got the job um, and like carrying on the legacy of Mickey Mouse. So if you're a big Disney fan, like that was a huge treat um, just to kind of get to see the man that is behind one of the biggest icons in the entire world. All right, we're walking through Artist Alley right now. A lot of really cool uh, artists come out and you can interact with them, meet them, uh, buy their art, one-of-a-kind art. And right now we're just passing through, hopefully to find some snacks and something to drink, because I am thirsty. Here at Fan Expo you can actually get not only your toys graded, but also your comics. So if, whether you buy them here or you bring them in, uh, to the uh, expo, you can actually have professionals grade it and tell you uh, its condition and perhaps even how much it's worth. All right, so I found a line. I'm not sure what line this is for, but I'm hungry. And so we're just going to go with it and see wherever this ends up. So hopefully it's 
something good. Good afternoon, citizen. What's the costume? The costume. He's gonna wait a little while and he'll be walking around in it. All right, so we're waiting for the Space Bros to come out. Their panel's at 3.30. Chris and I have posted up. We're waiting. Katie Sackhoff uh, is, her panel's currently going, but uh, we're first in line, at least for the GA. Yeah, we're waiting to see Brent Spiner and uh, LeVar Burt. So, Jordi LaForge and Commander Data. Or Reading Rainbow and the guy from Independence Day. Yeah, Reading Rainbow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage LeVar Burton and Brent Spiner. things off with a couple questions of my own and then I want to turn it over to you the fans uh, you are the reason that we're here now gentlemen I, I don't want to touch on a sore subject but now, Sherlock Holmes and Watson in space there is some dispute as to whose idea this was and I think it's better for us to just air this out now all right <clears throat> on further review the original Genesis of the idea for Holmes and Watson in space did in fact and indeed come from Brent Spiner. In fact, that's not true. <laughs> I, you know, no, seriously, I had no idea. No? No. Uh, when uh, the script for, uh, we did this episode called uh, Elementary Dear Data. Yeah. I didn't write it, uh, but uh, we did this episode, and uh, it just appeared, uh, you know, like all the scripts did when they pass out the scripts, and I got the script and opened it up, elementary, dear Dana, I said, ooh, because I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, and I thought, what's this going to be? And I opened it up, and I'm playing Sherlock Holmes, and I was like, this is great, and I said, who's playing Watson? It's got to be uh, Riker. Oh. Oh. Were you disappointed? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I said, Jordy's got to be playing uh, Watson, and, and indeed he was. And the rest is history. Wow. Tell, us, tell us about the genesis of Laura Burton Reads. I, I like reading a lot. We know <laughs> You know, when we were doing uh, Elementary Dear Data, he kept reading uh, while we were doing this show, and I kept saying, stop, we're trying to act In here. fact, I, I think that the genesis, the, the, the kernel of truth that formed the idea for LeVar Burton Reads came from Brent Spiner. Yes, I, uh, I, <laughs> I suggested one day, I said, hey, LeVar, have you ever thought about reading? <laughs> and, and, you know, he, he went, reading! You know, as I said, you, you had this show, Reading Rainbow, right? I said, you know nothing about rainbows. Why don't you read? And? And the rest is history. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jacob, massive fan. Uh, question a piece for you for Mr. Burton. Uh, speaking of reading Rainbow, I know when they pulled the funding the first time at PBS, they had stated it was more important to move towards teaching reading than it was teaching the enjoyment of it. Did anyone ever think to make the case that the enjoyment of reading is important to get to that second step? Because without enjoying it, why would they bother? Sir, we were talking to members of Congress. Hi. Uh, my family's been watching Star Trek since I can remember. Uh, I'm forgetting my question right now. Would, who was the first cast members that you played with 
when he first started Char Shark for both of you? Um, I did my first scene with Jonathan and Marina. I, yeah, I did my first scene with Jonathan and uh, Will Wheaton. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I, I auditioned with a scene with Jordy. Right. Um, but we didn't audition together. No, but, we didn't. But the scene was a scene between Data and Jordy. I would love to hear, because you can't tell us about the content of the show, but emotionally for you as performers, engaging with your beloved scene partners for the first time in uh, whatever form Brent is taking, and the well-known form that LeVar has taken, uh, what was that emotional journey like for you? Was was it something that you that you were able to anticipate, or did it hit you like a ton of bricks? Did did not know what the character arc would be um, over the course of the, the episodes in which Jordy appears. I got the chance to see how everyone else had grown and changed, and I was really happy with the the, the changes that had taken place in Jordy's life. And in terms of how we were related to one another, the last time Jordy saw. Data, he was leaping across the void to sacrifice himself. So, and the first time I see him, it's not him necessarily. So, th th there was a lot going on yeah, yeah. For, uh, for all of us, um, I think. Well, I tell you what, I, and I felt this, I'm sure you did too. In, in a way, it, it, there was no difference. It was like time had ceased to exist, and we were just. Doing it, we had stopped doing the the last film the day before, and we started doing this episode uh, the next day. And we related to each other in the exact same way that we always did. Yep. Uh, All right, Chris, what do you think of that? Uh, and I uh, love Lamar Burton, love Brent Spiner. They were awesome together. They were. Uh, there's a lot of cool banter. Brent was hilarious. Um, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was really great. You got uh, some cool behind-the-scenes info about Picard, so spoiler alert. <laughs> Good night, Fan Expo. We all are part of you. All right, everybody. Welcome back. So we made it home, and as promised, we are going to unbox our mystery boxes that we got at Fan Expo Dallas. So I got the Nickelodeon box. And I got the Star Wars Mandalorian, and apparently they had two, and, and I specifically asked for Baby Yoda, so Grogu. Really, really excited about this. Yeah, uh, I always like these things, you know, everybody likes opening presents, so who wouldn't like opening, you know, mystery boxes that contain, like, toys, and maybe there's a Funko Pop in here, who knows? Let's see. And you we wanna... legit, we did, we really thought about looking, but you are getting our genuine reaction we did not peek. I know right. we wanted to. All right, you go first. All right, I'm going first. Okay. There's a lot oh, of stuff in here. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm sorry. I just already started ripping things open. All right. Okay, precious cargo. Oh, cool. Clutch or a, clutch, a wristlet? Yeah. Wristlet. Clutch. Nice. Purse. Okay. Some lucky person's gonna get this in my family. <laughs> That's then again, cool, though. you know, I'm not opposed to hold wearing that. All right, all right. Oh my god. Oh okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. This was okay, worth it. K cute. This is adorable. that is so cute. That. I don't know what what would you call this. This is just like a handbag. It looks like a little handbag. Yeah. A little Grogu handbag. Okay. Well, I don't know. I think it's a shoulder bag because this the strap. Oh yeah, that's a really yeah. Nice it's strap. like a side the side bag you wear on the side. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Okay. I mean. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff in here, and I'm kind of, this is like Christmas. All right, got a Grogu keychain. Cool. Look at that. that is so right. cute. Okay, what else we got? What else we got? All right, okay, this appears to be a lanyard. Okay, always love a good lanyard. Okay, oh, this nice. is decent. This? We could have used that today. We could have used this today. Oh, and it's like. Oh, it's a stretchy it's lanyard. A stretchy lanyard, all right. And it's got, uh, and it says here, wanted, Baby Yoda. All right. Okay. First I thought slippers, but no. Ooh, is it a, okay. what is that? Is that a hat? It is, what is this? Is it just a little toy? I think it's just a little toy, look. I thought maybe one slipper, that'd be weird. But... It's his little pram, that's so cute. Yeah. Okay. I don't know, what is that? I don't know. Just a little plush. It's a plush toy. 
From him and his pram? His pram. Pram? Okay, comment down below. Did anyone know that is, that's what it's called, a pram? Anyway. Cool. That's adorable. Yeah, I'm definitely going to rock this. That's Maybe so on the cool. next cruise. And it's stretchy. All right, you got some good right. stuff in there. All right, time to open Nickelodeon. Ba -da 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 -da. For all my 90s kids out there. Dang, they have that on... They have that on lockdown. Look, you got. Oh, I got side ones. All right, here we go. Here right. we go. I love the box, by the way. Look at all the Nicktoons. Nicktoons. You got Rocco, the Rugrats, Rocket Power, Hey Arnold. All right. Okay, already oh, starting out strong. Oh yeah. Okay. What is that? This is a neck oh. gator. Cool. A SpongeBob neck gator. This is cool. All right. Uh, you didn't look, look, look what you got in there. Nice. <gasps> okay, first off, more SpongeBob <laughs> stuff. So it's you like can, a travel bottle, okay. Yeah, you nice. can add hand sanitizer or something. Okay, cool. All right. I'm down, I'm down. But I think we're going to have to go buy some to eat. <laughs> this is cool. It's a Reptar cereal bowl. Reptar cereal bowl. Oh my god, I love... We don't have cereal in the house. Who eats cereal? I can't eat cereal anymore. I love cereal. Okay. So let's see what this is. Uh, Ooh. It's not broken? I mean, they package this really well. Okay. How cute is this? And it says Reptar cereal in the inside of the bowl, if you can see that. It's got Reptar. This is so neat. Okay. Okay, let's take this out. Oh, there's there is oh, legit a, more. I have oh my, oh god. my god. It's a SpongeBob <laughs> spatula, you guys. It's a SpongeBob spatula. So I can flip my own Krabby Patties. This is a Krusty Krab spatula. It's actually like really good quality. Let me see this. Best grub in the sea. It's engraved. <laughs> it says best grub in the sea. No, this is like Okay, heavy. that's worth it alone and, right there. And did you see it says the crusty, crusty crab right there on the spatula itself? I don't know if they can see that. Because crusty crab pizza is the pizza for you and me. Comment down below if you know what episode that's from. And last but not least, a lanyard. It's an invader zim. Oh my god, yes. Yes! Okay. Oh, and it comes with like a little uh, thingy on it. Invader Zim. Y'all can see that. Look at that. This is so cute. Invader Zim. Lanyard. Yes. I'm going to rock this. This is so cool. All right. I think that's it. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of cool stuff. All right. These mystery boxes were worth it. Sometimes they're hit or miss with the stuff that you get in them. Yeah. But, but again, like Chris said, look at the box. I mean, you got all these Nicktoon characters. Like, I kind of want to keep the box. I don't know what we do. Definitely want to keep but... the box. The box is neat. Okay, we also had a. We got a free gift for buying two boxes. We got a mystery shirt. Mystery shirt. So this is. These okay. are probably the shirts that uh, they couldn't sell. So right. they're just giving hey, them away. But you so. know what? They found a way. So let's see what sort of weird. How cool would it be if it's Avatar: The Last Airbender? Okay, it won't be that, but it'll be like. Some sort of like staff shirt. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's say it is soft. It's, it's soft. So it's gonna that's say good. crew on it. Okay, it's a soft shirt. What you got? That's what a you good got? start. Okay. Okay, not bad. Okay. The angry, it's the angry, angry monkey, monkey from Family Guy. Oh my that's God. actually All pretty right. cool. That's. Uh, this is actually pretty badass. That's not a bad shirt. Okay, I will rock this. Ooh, let's go, Angry Monkey. All right, cool. Not bad for a free gift. All right, y'all. We are tired. We had a long day at Fan Expo. Um, it's been great. We might go to another con. We're thinking maybe Austin or maybe even Bell County. Um, we highly recommend Fan Expo. The one in Dallas was packed, but, you know, it's such a great community. Everyone there is so nice. You know, people come dressed um, in, in their favorite cosplay and... and, and to me, my favorite parts are just seeing everyone get along and, you know, just really share their experiences. And I, I have to say the uh, the Star 
what is it, the Star Trek Bros oh, yeah. panel it was probably the highlight of the that day. That was cool. Brent Spiner was awesome. And yeah. uh, LeVar Burton, too, obviously. He's the legend. But Abed's right. Like, we love going to Comic Cons just because the, the community of people that go, it is like just so supportive. Everybody is just having a good time. There's no judgment. So you're allowed to just kind of be yourself. And it's just so fun to see everybody just living their best life dressing up in their favorite characters, being able to nerd out with other nerds. It's like, uh, even if you're not nerdy and you just like this stuff, uh, go. I definitely recommend if you've never been to a con, just go. It's a great time. You get to see some awesome celebrities. Uh, you get to peruse some really cool merchandise. Uh, yeah, window mystery shop. boxes. Yeah, <laughs> mystery boxes. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it, we'll definitely keep going. We love them. Our ultimate goal is to one day go to like something like San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con, or like D23 or Star Wars Celebration. Like those are our grand goals. But uh, for now, we'll take the little cons. These are su super fun too. So I can't imagine like what those bigger ones are like. Uh, but one day we will get there. You'll see a random recess one day. Remember this day, you'll see a random recess one day from <laughs> D23, Star Wars Celebration, San Diego Comic Con, all of them. So, Mark me. Yeah. We will go. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Tomorrow's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of you happy fathers Father's out there. Day. Happy Father's Day to our dads. Uh, thanks for being awesome. But special shout out to all of your dads as well. Uh, and if you're a father out there, happy Father's Day. All right, guys. And until, until next time, we'll see, see you on, on the next recess. recess. Ha <laughs> ha.